Jian Wei Zhong. I'm a third year electrical engineering. After I took this course, I know the embedded system is important in many kind of applications such as automobiles, industrial robots, and medical devices. My main interest is in medical devices. And, and right now, I know um, almost all kinds of medical devices uh, need embedded systems such as um, blood pressure measurement and uh, glucose glucose meter and MNR, the nuclear magnetic resonance. Um, hello, my name is Huang Hua Qiao. I'm a third year electrical engineering student. Through this course in best system, I gain various knowledge of best system and all kinds of components that uh, it can work with, um, like uh, ADC and uh, keypad, LCD, and so on. Um, I know that there is a lot of application of uh, embedded systems like um, a control system, uh, automations, and uh, a lot of subsystems like uh, like in our cell phone, our camera. They all need uh, embedded system to control them. So knowing embedded system would be an invaluable asset for electrical engineers like me. Before we introduce our project, I would like to talk about something about embedded system. A definition of embedded system is that a less powerful computer for specific purpose of application, it usually consumes less power and smaller in size. The simplest embedded system, for example, can be like a seven segment display. It, can, it, it consists with um, microcontroller and actuator, which is a display. And there are three main components in embedded system. The first one is microcontroller, which is the most important part of embedded system. And the second part is actuator and sensor. For example, thermometer is a typical embedded system. The sensor of thermometer it can detect environmental temperature and then the sensor send a signal to ADC which usually include in the, the microcontroller and then the microcontroller will send a signal to actuator which is in this case is a display of the thermometer. And then I'm going to talk about our project. In our project, we designed an analog digital converter, which usually called ADC. And the definition of ADC is that a device which can convert a continuous physical quantity, which is usually a voltage to discrete number, which represents a quantity's amplitude. One of the most important property of ADC is quantization level, which is usually called also called resolution of ADC. Of course, with higher resolution, and then the signal can be represented in the best uh, so way. So here's our hardware setup for our project. Um, so this is the function generator. This is the oscilloscope. This is a breadboard on which we actually have C uh, three resistors in series, and uh, it, and then we would actually connect this big one board to one of the resistors to measure the voltage across the resistor. The reason being is, okay, first of all, uh, the function generator is um, generating a 90 hertz signal, uh, which is from 0 to 2 volts. And However, the, the big one board, it only accepts 0 to 1.8 volts uh, analog input, so we need to somehow lower the voltage from the function generator. So we will first connect the input to the breadboard and this voltage divider, which actually uh, it's going to lower the voltage, and we will, we will output the voltage across the third resistor onto the, the oscilloscope to make sure that it does not exceed the maximum. And then we will connect the board 
to this uh, to uh, connect the big one board onto the bird board and and then it should be able to start measuring the voltage across the resistor since we have already connected all the hardware we can start um, collecting data from the big one board so first let's log into the board Then we should go to our working directory. And then we need to enable the ADC on board first. Um, since we previously already enabled the ADC, so here it's giving us a, a right error, but just remember we need to enable the ADC every time we uh, need to do the collection. And then we will run the program we wrote. After we run the program, we can import our data into the MATLAB Now we have our data in the MATLAB. We can um, we can plot our data, and this is how it would look like um, a little bit fluctuation because of the stability of the function generator. And we can do Fourier transform to see whether it has the correct frequency. So this is the function that I used to do the Fourier transform. It takes uh, the first uh, arc. Uh, the first argument takes in the function, the second argument takes in the sampling period. Since we actually recorded 10 seconds, so, so we will need to multiply that number by 10. And then this is our order transform, the DC shift in the middle. And Need to all we need to look at is these spikes, and it, it's approximately at like between 92 and 94, which means we recorded the signal with relatively good accuracy. And that's it.